Hi everyone, welcome to another video which I hope will help you with your research studies. I will keep this short, but in this video today, I will provide you with an example of how to conduct a content analysis in qualitative research. I will take you through actual data that was collected in a research study and help you understand how you can use that data to con conduct a content analysis from the information that was provided through the research participants. Pay attention to every slide, pay attention to the words that I've highlighted, pay attention to the methodology that I have used in identifying themes and the other steps involved in content analysis. Now in my previous video, the link of which is provided in the description section below, I actually highlighted four steps. These are the four steps that are normally involved in any kind of data processing in qualitative studies, including content analysis. The four steps included identifying the main themes, assigning the codes to the main themes, classifying the responses under the main theme, and integrating the themes and responses into the text of your report. In today's video, I will highlight how these four steps are conducted. Now you can see here the purpose of the study that I will use as an example was basically to uh, develop an operational service model based upon the principles of family engagement. So here we are discussing uh, collecting data about a model that was used to support families with children. Now the author who collected the data wanted to develop a service model. The information was predominantly gathered through in-depth and focus group discussions with clients, uh, clients that is families, service providers and service managers. After informal talks with a number of stakeholders, a list of possible issues was drawn up to form the basis of the discussions in the in-depth interviews and group discussions. However, the list was merely a guiding framework and was open to inclusion of any new issue that emerged during the discussions. Out of the several issues that were identified to examine various aspects of the model, here the author has taken only one to show the process of identifying themes that emerged. Note that these themes have not been quantified. They are substantiated by verbatim, exactly how the respondents provided their response. This is one of the differences, main differences between qualitative and quantitative research. So here I will show you how the perceived strengths of the family engagement model is identified by stakeholders during the data collection process. Providing the background was a bit important for you guys so that you know where the research is coming from. Now remember here we are trying to identify the main themes through content analysis. So here the main theme is basically to get the perceived strength of the model. The framework developed for the perceived strength of the model was based upon the analysis of the information gathered, which suggested that the various themes that emerged during the data collection stage reflected the strengths of the model that could be classified under the four perspectives of the family, the child, the service provider themselves, and the service delivery manner. So here I will individually take you through the slides where the perceived strength of the model was viewed from the individual stakeholders based upon the information collected, how it was classified under these four themes and how the text provided the um, categories. So first we focus on uh, the data that was collected from the families and how from the text of the families some of the themes were identified which could then be codified into text in a report. Alright, so the first thing that you will see is that the first theme that we was identified was empowerment of families. The see the text that I have put in the quotation marks here and how this text directly provided the identification of the theme. Now you can see here sometimes the text will clearly mention the theme. For example, this model empowers the family a lot more, hence the theme of empowerment of families. And sometimes it will be a bit indirect, like it allows them to feel that they can make some decisions, which is uh, indirectly relating to empowerment of families. The next one is building of capacity of families. Again, under this model, a family has taken a stronger role in bringing about change as compared to maybe the older model, or it allows them to resolve their own issues. Remember, in each of this, the family is providing some data regarding the 
old model and some regarding the new model. Every time you go through the data, you have to see how the data, how the words help you in identifying things. Now, this takes time. Remember, it's not an easy decision. Make sure that you are reading the text as I am talking about it because I don't want to simply read the text from the slide. Otherwise, it gets a bit boring. But you can see from here how the text, see the words, note the wording and see how it was used in making a or identifying a theme. Sometimes, like I said, the words will directly provide a theme. Sometimes you have to indirectly look for the theme to come out from the text. Remember, it's a time consuming process. It takes time. Sometimes you may need to seek the help of your fellow researcher or your supervisor. But going through the text a number of times and making sure that you identify the themes is the most important uh, part of the qualitative data analysis. Let's take the second one or the second uh, perspective was from the child. Now you will see here again some of the themes being identified. So the fun of the themes that was identified was a greater focus on children. Again, you can see sometimes it's directly worded in the respondent's word that it is more child focused or sometimes it will be indirectly worded like focus on how to make children safe and how we are going to achieve that. Remember that every time the respondents are talking about the model. So you have to keep going back to how the text, how the themes are relating to the model because remember that you your objective, your research objective, don't forget your research objective when identifying the text or the themes because often researchers forget the main view. So make sure that you highlight what you're trying to find out in front of your computer, in front of your eyes. You should have the objective clearly written, maybe on a piece of paper and stick it so that you keep coming back to the main objective. So here your main objective was to find the perceived strengths of the family engagement model. You identified that there are four perspectives, family, child, service providers and service delivery manner. Now, when you go through their perspectives, you can start identifying the themes here. So when you start identifying the themes, it becomes easier for you to focus on the themes. It, it becomes easier for you to then start to organize the text under these themes. Uh, and then you can write about it also in your text report. Now, remember, you can uh, write, you can use the direct quotations to support your arguments, to support how your themes were identifying, or you can provide an explanation or example. Some people do it in a tabular format towards the end of the paper. Some people use it within the text, but mainly qualitative research uses uh, verbatim comments, comments in quotation marks to show how each comment, how each response uh, supported the creation of the uh, themes. All right, this is the perceived, per perceived strengths again from the perspectives of the service providers. Now you can see uh, there could be many, I am just giving you some examples here. Uh, so there are only six examples here. There could be more. Uh, so I have not listed all of them, but there were about 10 or 11 uh, that was identified. So remember that it is not always be the same number of issues that you will identify. You will identify a number of different issues depending upon the data that you have collected and who you have collected it from, what was the sample size. So you can see here that um, Again, I don't want to keep repeating here, uh, but I have given you a different couple of different examples under each theme to show you how words can lead to the identification of the uh, themes. Sometimes uh, the words were a bit indirect. Uh, for example, if you see theme number two, decline in hostility towards the department. Now, the word hostility was not used when the clients uh, were uh, called less aggressive or antagon and, and antagonistic, but uh, as a researcher, you must be able to understand how the words are related to the theme. And that is why I said it is a bit of a time consuming process where you have to go through the text a number of times and make sure that you identify the theme. Sometimes the themes that you identify will change a little bit from here and there, depending on what kind of arguments, statements that you find to support each. Uh, you don't have to find a number of statements, but finding two or three against each, against each theme is a good idea because that it shows the reader that you did find a number of different uh, supporting arguments towards identification of this theme. But make sure you keep reading the text. See how I have used the text to develop the theme. That is the most important bit of the qualitative research analysis. The last slide here shows you how the perceived strengths from the perspectives of the service delivery manner was identified. Now, remember, this is a service delivery manner. It is not exactly the family or the child or the or the or the service provider. Here it is. We are focusing on the manner, on a system, on a process. So again, you can use the text uh, or the data collected from your research participants in identifying themes under a 
process under a um, service under a system so again like i said uh, going through your uh, data and making notes so even when you are making or when you are collecting the data sometimes it's a good idea for you to make notes just brief notes you don't have to waste too much time in making notes because otherwise your attention will be diverted from collecting of data but just making some brief notes uh, while the respondents are speaking uh, because that helps you to get your uh, text in order when you're going through it so if you have some notes written on the side that helps you to remember to organize your notes because remember sometimes the quality to data is a, a number of pages it's a large number of pages or sometimes a large number of text and you have to go through these recordings sometimes it's video recordings audio recordings so having some notes in hand for you to just go through it will help you to organize the text organize the themes maybe identify the themes sometimes the themes will come to you while you are collecting data so that makes it easy for you to then identify the themes when you are going through the text and seeing how the arguments how the comments how the respondents text uh, or words used helps you in supporting those themes so once you have supported or you have identified the themes you've got the responses against those themes it's just a simple thing of integrating the themes and responses into the text of your report or your journal or your thesis getting it organized uh, is a simple uh, step after you have gone through this number of steps because it's just then about putting your arguments together so guys i hope uh, this video was useful for you to understand how the content analysis is done how we use the content of the respondents uh, res respondents response in identifying themes uh, how we use the words how we play around with the words how we uh, provide a synonyms or um, meaning of the same meaning of the different words into a classification of a theme please make sure that you go through each of these themes i didn't want to go through each of this text because it would have been boring but please go through it and see what has been done and that will really help you with your content analysis thank you for watching today's video guys please like comment share and subscribe and i will see you soon with my next video bye for now